Dom Filker, I'm a senior consultant with Magenic, and today we're going to expand on a previous Dimecast by connecting to a WCF service, essentially creating a WCF service client. In the previous Dimecast, we created a WCF service, and this WCF service is a player stats service. The player stats service returns player's name or some player statistics. The player statistics are simple, is a simple structure class that contains points and a ranking. Now this could be a web service that was hosted maybe on a sports website or maybe a gaming website that provides some statistics about a certain player and people could write clients to connect to those services and consume them. Now I've added two projects to our solution at this point which is a console client and a web client. First we'll go into the console client. At this point there's two different ways uh, that we can add references or excuse me create WCF clients. We can create a Windows or a web, etc. We're gonna use a console app in this instance because it's the simplest with the short amount of time that we have. The method for adding a reference to a you know a XAML project, a WPF project, or perhaps a uh, regular Windows Forms project is exactly the same. I am just demonstrating the, the web and the console and you'll see that those methods too are virtually identical but I want to prove to you that they both work. The one method is to add a service reference through the menus right here. So we can add a service reference. And the other method is to actually generate it through a tool called SBC Util. At first, we're going to go ahead and add it to a service reference. So we can say add service reference. I've already fired up the WSDL here. I'm going to click copy, paste the WSDL into here. You can see we have the player stat service. We can give it a uh, namespace, but we'll just leave it as a default for now for a demonstration. What this has done is it's created an app.config for us, and it's also referenced system.runtime.serialization and system.servicemodel for us. System.servicemodel is WCF's core reference, and the serialization reference is for serializing the pipes back and forth across the wire. Inside of the app.config, we have then added a system.servicemodel element which contains all the configuration for the WCF client. We have the binding configuration here where we can change, for example, the message encoding from text to mtom, or we can change the timeouts, etc. And then we also have the client element which specifies the endpoint and the ABCs of the WCF client. So the address, the binding, and the contract. This is generated for us. Let's go to the program now and actually write some code. I've already written this code so you don't have to see me write it. Again, we're missing a reference. I'll have ReSharper add that for us. Let's build it. All we're going to basically do is write the player's name. We're going to get the player's statistics. We're going to write their points and their rank to the screen. Just go ahead and fire this up. As you can see, we have connected up to the web service, grab the name Don, we have grabbed the points and the ranking. Very simple. So what we can do now is we can also go back here and just delete this reference. Because now, I want to create this proxy manually. And what you can do is go to the Visual Studio 2005 command prompt, excuse me, 2008 command prompt. And you can also do this in 2005 as well if you have uh, .NET 3.0 installed. And you can type svc util and then that, the address of the WSDL. Now you see here it's already been created for us. Now this creates a proxy a CS file for us that we can include inside of any project perhaps post on a website for people to download with a configuration file so they don't have to do this manually so you can provide this to your customers if you wanted to which is one great advantage of this. It also gives you the ability to just have a, a CS file that you can put in a common location and maybe add a link to it etc. SBC Udo is a pretty in-depth tool which I'm not going to be able to get into but it allows you to provide many different options and we'll just show you this list. It's probably streamed by out way too fast there for you. So if you see this, there's one page, two, three, four, five, six pages of SVC UL information and I've even expanded the command prompt window. Basically you can change a whole bunch of options on the, uh, the proxy from the namespaces uh, to different metadata information to uh, just give me some documentation only, etc. So what we're going to do at this point is we're just going to copy and paste from the web service and just say generate. Generate me a file. And what it actually does is it generates two files. 
player stat service, which is the proxy file, and the configuration for the WCF client. So let's go back to the console client. We're just going to add these as existing items. We have all files, see the output, and there's the stats, which we generated inside of this location, player stat service. Let's include those. You can delete the app.config because that's from previously. We open up the output.config, there's our service model stuff. It generated the same stuff as if you, you right click and add service reference. Change to app.config. Now if you see here, it doesn't find service reference anymore because we didn't mask it and we didn't tell it to give a certain namespace. Now you can do that through the SVC Google command. Click there. We'll add the reference to Ruby Sharper. Let's build this again. So you can see it built. Now it's fired up. Boom, connected to the web service and downloaded our data as expected. Real simple. That's how you can connect through a console app. It's going to be essentially the same for a web application. We can add a service reference again. We can say we add service reference. Get the WSDL. Oops, that's right. Add a uh, service util inside of here, which shouldn't be there. Go, there's going to find our service reference. We can leave the namespace as default if we want to. Again, this is going to add our web.config. It's going to add the values down at the bottom of the web.config. So we see here it's added the service model at the bottom of the web.config, which is perfect what we wanted to do. It's added the runtime serialization in the service model. And here's our service reference here. We can also view the files by clicking on this here and seeing the actual files of the actual proxy, which is the reference.cs. And you can explore these files at a later time. Just be sure to show all files. So let's go into our default CS. Again, I've typed this here already, so you don't see it type it. It's not going to find it, so let's have ReSharper automatically add this. And we need to make a two string here. And setting these to a label, which requires strings. Let's build this. Our build succeeded. Let's view this in the browser. All right, so you see the name's gone. Points 9932 and the rank is 33. Great, perfect. Now uh, that's how we did it with the service reference. Now let's go ahead and delete that service reference. What we'll also need to do is delete the service model because this was generated for us. That's fine. Let's go up here and delete the service reference. We'll delete that folder too. We really don't need that. Again, you're going to see that now we don't have these references or anything of that nature. Let's right click and let's add that proxy that we generated before through service util. We add the proxy and the output file, output config. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy the service model, copy this, and put it down to web.config. I could have left the web.config here from before, but this is just an example showing you how you would do it if you had not utilized service reference. You just paste your system to service model down the bottom or wherever you're happy with in your config file. Close this out. Let's go back to the CS file. Now you see here it found a reference that we can reference for these types. We'll get rid of the old one because we're not using that one anymore. Let's build it. Let's view it in the browser. Again, worked as we expected. Return name Don, points 9932 and rank 33. The advantage, in my opinion, of using a external file is you can provide this file to your customers, again, with a configuration file as a package. Um, so if you perhaps are migrating to a new service or would you like to provide convenience to your clients you can just give them a .cs file and a configuration file that they need to add to their projects and then they can connect up at any time that they wish as long as they're using .net of course you can also connect to a wcf service from silverlight uh, we're not going to be able to demonstrate that at this time essentially it's the same thing you're going to right click on services and add a service reference at that time it's going to generate the proxy for you Unfortunately, you cannot use the command line tool at this time because there's not a command line tool that will generate the proper proxy for Silverlight. Because Silverlight requires all calls to be asynchronous, the regular SVC util does not generate that type of file. Uh, so you have to add the service reference manually uh, through the add service reference. That will create a service references.client config inside of your Silverlight application, which is where all the configuration information is stored for Silverlight and packaged in the zap file, which is downloaded to the client at runtime. Again, I hope this Dimecast has helped connecting to a WCF service, creating WCF clients. Thank you, and until next time.